Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will talk about the specific diagnostic tests for miscarriages. Ideally, the couple should be seen together at dedicated recurrent miscarriage clinic and given accurate information to facilitate decision making about the future pregnancies. After compiling the accurate information, the next step is the investigation. There are certain diagnostic tests which we will discuss today. If you want to watch more videos about recurrent miscarriages, go to the link in the i button in the top right corner of this video. So what are those specific diagnostic tests for recurrent miscarriages diagnosis? We have antiphospholipid antibodies testing. Secondly, the karyotyping, pelvic ultrasound, thrombophilia screening. So one by, by one, we will discuss all these tests. Coming to the antiphospholipid antibody syndrome diagnosis also called APLS. To diagnose APLS, it is mandatory that the woman has two positive tests at least 12 weeks apart of either lupus anticoagulin or anticardiolipin antibodies of IgG or IgM class in a medium or high titer of over 40 gram per liter. And the third one is that of the anti-beta-2 glycoprotein 1 antibody. In the detection of the lupus anticoagulant, the dilute Russell Viper Venom Time test is done together with a platelet neutralization procedure. And this testing is more sensitive and specific than either the activated partial thromboplastin time test or caroline clotting time test. And APLS antibodies are detected using standardized ELISA testing kit. But it's very important to note that the detection of APLS antibodies is subjected to considerable interlaboratory variations. So we need to correlate our clinical findings along with the laboratory results. Next important diagnostic test is that of the karyotyping. Cytogenetic analysis should be performed on the product of conception of the third and subsequent miscarriages. Secondly, the parental peripheral blood karyotyping of both partners should be performed in a couples with the recurrent miscarriages where a testing of the product of conception reports an unbalanced structural chromosomal abnormality. Next important diagnostic test is that of pelvic ultrasound, which is very important among all these tests. All the women with recurrent first trimester miscarriages and all the women with the one or more second trimester miscarriages should have pelvic ultrasound to assess the uterine anatomy. Uterine anatomy assessment is very important because we, we have certain uh, uterine anomalies which are very important causes of recurrent miscarriages. So suspected uterine anomalies may require further investigations to confirm the diagnosis using different modalities like hysteroscopy, laparoscopy or three-dimensional pelvic ultrasound. So after ultrasound, we may move to those testing as well, but the initial diagnostic test is that of the pelvic ultrasound. In the women with recurrent second trimester miscarriages, the cervical length assessment is also a very important tool. And if the cervical length is less than 25 mm, then what we do? We, we just uh, consider the cervical circlage insertion. The last testing is that of thrombophilia testing. Women with the second trimester miscarriages should be screened for inherited thrombophilia defect like factor V leading factor 2 prothrombin gene mutation and protein S mutation. So these are all the important diagnostic tests for recurrent miscarriages. Definitely after doing these initial tests, we go for the further testing if required. I would like to complete my presentation with this quote that never give up. There are always tough times regardless of what you do in anything in life. Be able to push through those times and maintain your ultimate goal so that brings us to the end of my presentation finally i would like to finish by thanking you all for your attention i wish you all the best in your future allah hafiz